Product name, Creative Outlier Air. Product category, truly wireless earphones. Product price, around 80 euros. Product any good? Well, that's what we are going to find out with a quick first look at the case as always. Comparing it with the most comparable ones that I have here, I think it stacks up quite well. It is a little bit larger in this dimension, but therefore not so much in terms of thickness, which is okay. Build quality is also quite good. The only thing that is a little bit odd, you have to always look which side you have to press into to open it where we can see the earphones and those won't fall out since the magnets are good enough. It is a little bit of a wobble mechanism but it is fine what we then have here are four leds that show us different kind of statuses for example left and right shows you if the left or right one is charging the lightning shows you that the case is charging and the one with the battery shows you how much charge we have left depending on that you get a different kind of color and we get usb type c so therefore generally i would say case okay so let's take those out and then I have a question that I would really like to know an answer for. Why do we only get this one size of tips? We get two pairs, okay, we get a, one as a reserve, but as a spare, but why only this one? Because I mean, maybe because it's wider, it should fit every ear, but knowing from a fellow YouTuber, he said it's way too small for him, it doesn't see it at all. Not an issue for me since I usually have smaller ears and anyone who has smaller ears won't have an issue with the tips, but definitely with the size of the earphones, because for me personally, these are quite big. I mean, they maybe look even more so hefty at first glance. Once I put them in my ear, it's not that bad, but especially the whole width of the device of the earphones are a little bit too much for me. Thickness is not an issue or something like that and about comfort I will talk about later but let's get into the buttons first because I really like those to see all the time since proper buttons in my opinion are just a better way if not that stiff because you will have to press them quite hard into your ear I therefore know a lot of people like capacitive ones but I rather push that a little bit sometimes in my ear than having accidental triggers all the time now, how do they work? Well, a press twice is for the next track, three times for the last track. And if you long press each side, you can actually even change the volume. Maybe not the best solution since you have to press quite long and then you only change one volume step, but it's at least a solution. And since we usually only have like one button or like two, for example, on each one, there is just a limit. I also like the big indicators for left and right. And what I also like quite a lot is the way that these work in mono mode, because if you just take out them at the same time, usually the last one that was the master is the master, but if you only take one out, it will become the master. Maybe it needs to kind of disconnect first and then connect again. But if you put that in, then this one disconnects and connects again. But this allows for a pretty seamless mono mode solution on both sides. So I actually like that quite a lot. And now let's put them in. And you can see that they don't look that bad. They stick out, but that's actually normal. And on my trip to Taipei, I've seen way worse ones. So that's actually not an issue. But for me, it's always since the whole body of the outside is quite wide that I constantly feel them in my ear. Now in my right one, I would say for like two or three hours, it's actually fine. After that, I get a little bit of soreness inside. The fit is very secure. I would actually say you could make sports with these, but in my little bit more left sensitive ear, I don't really like this one. I actually can't use them in stereo mode for longer than an hour without it driving me crazy because I permanently feel this pressure of these inside. So I didn't like that at all. Most normal people will have no issue with that. I've seen people wearing way bigger ones and it was an issue or the ones that I don't think are comfortable and they wear. So I don't think that's an issue, but it definitely should be pointed out. Isolation. It's very natural, I always like that because it blocks out quite a lot of noise, but it lets through the important things so you don't feel kinda like completely shut off. That's something that I don't like. What I like is the volume, but just about that because it is loud enough for what I usually need it for, but we don't really have too much reserves, but at least we have an I listen very loud. <laughs> Otherwise, the next thing is APTX. Yes, that means if you watch a video, there is pretty much no delay, no visible one. So all is good here. Also background noise was absolutely fine. Controls take a little bit of time until they erect, but it also is okay. Let me check the next one. The battery life, yeah, that's important. They claim I think like eight hours. What I got pretty much constantly every time, which is actually odd since I didn't use the same volume all the time, was 6 hours and 40 or 6 hours and 45. At the volume at usually like 60%. If I would go maybe higher, it would be less, but usually the difference isn't actually that big. And that is a very good battery life after all, even though maybe not quite as good as mentioned with eight hours. The microphone quality is also typically for those a little bit better ones, truly wireless earphones on that range. So that's pretty much it. Connection was quite fast, especially since it had to reconnect and connect to whichever one is the master. That one worked fine, it was stable. 
all good here. So let's talk about the sound now. Sound stage is, and this is where things will sound a little bit odd, but it's normal. It's usually what you get on these kind of headphones with the imaging. The dynamic is quite good. Sound signature, I would say, is very, very pleasing because we definitely have an emphasized bass, but we still have enough mids and also enough highs that this whole thing on a mainstream bass actually feels very nicely balanced. I like that and they are definitely very well suited for long-term listening sessions since there is nothing kinda out of the ordinary going on. But talking about that bass, sub bass was absolutely solid. It wasn't like crazy, but it was good. We got a good tight bass. It was precise enough. It was emphasized. It had a nice little punch and a little bit something oomph inside of it, but it wasn't like something completely outstanding, especially not at this price point. It did what it's supposed to do at that price point. Mids actually do a little bit of a nicer job. They feel a little bit more emphasized than some other ones. Doesn't mean it's a lot, but still. So vocals had a good overall ex um character and some volume to it, some warmth, body, and clarity was also quite good. Now, up to the top, I have to say, it's not crazy in terms of harshness or going anything like that. It cuts off early enough, it rolls off soft enough, so those highs are there. I would personally wish for sometimes a little bit more because recently all the ones that I've tried feel a little bit held back, which kind of leads me to feeling that I want a little bit more clarity, a little bit of some brilliance up there, but for most people it will be just fine since it's not too demanding or too fatiguing or something like that. There is no sibilance, not at all. And, well, details are comparing to what you get that you don't get the most extreme highs is absolutely fine, which makes it for all genres, pr genres pretty much suitable. I didn't really think anything didn't work. Metal worked great, rock pop especially and also bass heavy music worked really nice but it was still good enough and not kind of too extreme in one or the other direction for classical music and so on. Now competition, that's the thing. Since these cost around 80 euros, the closest ones that I have here that I like and I usually recommend are for example the Soundcore Liberty Air. Here they cost around like 100 euros but I know like 80, 90 bucks so pretty much on the same part. I like this a lot more when it comes to comfort. These I can have in my ear and pretty much forget, actually even in both. The volume is pretty much the same. I think actually the sound signature is a little bit nicer because they have a little bit more clarity, a little bit more emphasized highs, which is something that I like. Battery life is not quite as good at around five hours. Controls are not quite as good. The look is maybe not quite as good, but generally for what's important for me, I like these a little bit more. I would wish for a little bit more battery life or maybe APTX SG here as well, or APTX, but I prefer the comfort. That's my main biggest thing. That's actually my one thing why I am not so crazy about these. The next thing at around maybe like 50, depending on where you get them, or maybe 80 bucks or 100, really depends on where you get them, are the one more stylish truly wireless. Those I also like more in terms of comfort. The fit is even better because these have these, these hooks, as you can see here, and these allow for a very kind of shape locked design that is still very comfortable. We have a proper button. We also have around six, six and a half hours of battery life. We also have a good master mode. We have APTX HD, or APTX, sorry, APTX here as well, a case that is good enough and all those kind of things. So sound wise, I slightly prefer the creative because they sound a little bit cleaner. But since I get the better comfort here, a little bit of some easier controls and so on, I also prefer these in that regard. And then a little bit cheaper at around 40 euros, the Sabbat E12. Let me take those out. Ni nicest design, I have to say, most subtle one. Also great battery life, six and a half hours, actually even like 10 hours in mono mode. The mono mode wor doesn't work that great and we don't have APTX or something like that. The case is good quality. Generally also similar sound to what we get here, those sound a little bit weaker than the rest here. And that leads me to the pros and cons of the creative. A good case, a good comfort for people who have bigger ears, I think. Very secure fit, a very good sound, APTX, good controls, volume control and all that, a very nice mainstream sound. So in that regard, I'm pleased. On the con side, pretty much just that I can't use them for a longer period of time. They are just a little bit 
too much in my ear. I feel them all the time. That's pretty much the only thing. And maybe, but that's not a con, I would wish for a little bit more clarity, a little bit more highs. And this means for who are they, anyone who wants really good sound, not pay too much, because I think all those $200, $300 um, truly wireless are, are just a, almost a little bit of a ripoff because you don't get that much more out of that. Here you already get quite a lot. Like I said, the competition is there, but especially if you want a very good mono mode, if you want APTX, so no delay, if you want a solid case, if you want very good battery life and a really good sound, then these are for you. And well, my recommendation is still at least watch the reviews of these three here. These are the, definitely the strongest competitors. The Sabbath, a little bit cheaper. The one more, maybe not quite the nicest design because like the Shrek look and so on, but also overall very similar in terms of sound. But those kind of things and then those if you want a little bit more for an airport like look, but also very, very nice sound. If those, the creative would have been priced at maybe like 60, I would have had an easier time to recommend them. But the issue is not that these aren't good. The issue is that Dutch competition, especially from China, got so strong with just better value. But what these do, and if you find them maybe for cheaper, they do it really nice. So as you have especially seen the comfort, for me, the subjective thing was the only, pretty much only weak weakness. And if that's not a big thing for you, and value maybe isn't the best one, but that's that. So... If they do what you want them to do, you should be definitely very happy. But well, competition in the truly water segment is brutal. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Until next time. Bye.